I'm going to go over in great detail how you can install your own new car stereo by yourself with all the stuff that I have laid out here in front of you. First off, I have a new Pioneer One Den car stereo. I also have this, which is a, a made by PAC. This is a steering wheel remote control interface, which will allow me to integrate the steering wheel controls into my new stereo because you're going to lose those once you unplug your existing factory one. I also have a Metra stereo adapter interface which I'm going to explain to you how this gets wired up into here along with this wiring harness for this steering wheel interface that I just mentioned before. Here's the other piece of the steering wheel interface which also has a 3.5 millimeter jack you can see there which correlates to the back of my stereo that's going to plug in there and through the wiring through data on the car to this module is going to transmit all that through this analog interface through this little jack into this car stereo so they can talk to one another. I also have a GM standard to mini GM adapter which is going to allow me to step down the GM mini size to a universal for my new Pioneer stereo here. So we have that, we have it all laid out. This here of course is the, car, the, uh, the Pioneer side of the harness which is going to get wired into here. And last but not least I have this dash kit which is going to fill the hole and give me some other features when I install my new stereo such as this it's gonna allow me to have this pocket because my existing stereo is this size it's a little bit bigger than a double din opening and since I'm doing a single din that's gonna fill that spot this is gonna leave this hole so you can put CDs or just keep your stuff in there and this is gonna give you the black ABS texture to finish off the job and make it look really nice now all these components that I'm using to install including the antenna adapter, dash kit, harness. These you can find by yourself by going to metraonline.com. Um, Skosh is another company, American International. There's lots of them out there. Um, if you watch most of my other videos on my channel, I actually have one called Where's the Service, which actually goes into detail online, showing you where you can find out about all these parts, finding the app guides, etc., all that stuff. Um, this one here, I've never touched on, but this here is PAC, P-A-C. Their website is pack-audio.com. It's a good company. This stuff works really flawlessly with these units. I've used them a lot of times. So that was a no-brainer choice for me. Um, so that's it. Let's let's get to it. I mean, as far as doing the job, you don't really need a whole lot of fancy stuff. I mean, you just need the car, the car tools to re, re, remove your dashboard. In this case, this one here is four seven mils. You're going to need, um, you know, a not pointy, not, uh, a blunt type of flathead screwdriver, if, or preferably if you have a plastic panel puller, that would be even better choice to pull out the dash and get to um, access some of these parts. That would be a, a must have. I use a hook tool, also known as the cotter pin extractor, which I use to mount the sleeve and the radio and all that. A standard wire stripper, a crimper, and I have some wire ties, that's pretty much it. So first thing I'm gonna do is my harness. And I'm going to go through this and I'm also going to say what the functions and colors of all the wires are as I'm doing them. If you're a little bit more advanced and this is a little too second grade for you, I apologize, but I have to create this video so that way it's watchable for anybody, depending on whatever level that they're at. Some people, you know, just don't do this that often. Or so I try to be fair to everybody, I treat everybody equally. So what I'm doing right here is just stripping back about three quarters of an inch of wire on each one of these. Now, on my factory harness, I mean, I don't need to look at the books and all that stuff, but I'll just tell you off the top of my head. You ground, yellow is your constant power, red is your accessory power with the key. You're going to have this blue-white wire. Some radios will also have a blue. However, that's almost never used anymore because that the blue is for a power antenna. And cars just pretty much don't have those anymore. The blue-white is the amp turn-on. Um, in this particular O2 Cadillac, it does have a factory sub. And this wire here, once the radio gets turned on, it's going to throw 12 volts on this blue-white, which is going to turn on the factory sub or the amplifier, allowing the premium sound to come on. These other eight wires, you got the purples purple and purple black the purple is 
positive on all these. Purple is your rear right, your greens, your rear left, your whites are your front left, and your grays are your front right. So that's pretty much your wires on that side. Now, the steering wheel interface, this is another thing. If you're not doing a steering wheel interface, don't sweat it. This is just in case you happen to be doing it. And that's what makes this video a little bit better because even if you're not doing it in this application, down the road, who knows, you may actually need to know. So, like I mentioned, this one here is going to plug into the back of this receiver like so. And then you're going to have the, the wiring side. Now, there are so many different vehicles and so many different applications and different parts for these kinds of things. That's why if you're going to do one of these steering wheel controls, make sure, make very good sure that you go onto the manufacturer's website if they have, like this manufacturer has, a website so you can go on and you can print all this, which shows you the harness, the plug, the colors that you need to use, which ones you can insulate and not use, how to mount it, how to program it, how it functions, the whole bit. Make sure you get this in good detail. I don't actually have my car, my O2 Cadillac, however, there's two of them. There's one that has temp controls on a steering wheel and another one that doesn't. I don't really know and it's not really a big deal, so I'll just leave this, you know, in the box so when I go over there and knock this thing out, I'll just do, do the one that's according to what I need it to be. But that's important that you have it and have it laid out in front of you. So for me, of course, you know, being a know-it-all, I don't need all these harnesses and crap, but for you guys, take your, you know, manual for your stereo. Open it up so it shows you color to color. So you have that, you have this, have all your instructions, everything laid out. More or less, for, for my scenario, which I'm using this pack adapter, this Metro interface, and my Pioneer, all the stuff goes color to color, believe it or not. And that's, that's a lot of times how it works. The stuff is pretty much you know, a system. But don't, just because mine is, is a system and it's working out that way, don't take it for granted that yours is that way. It may not be, okay? So, in order for me to prep up my system, the only thing I'm, I'm not familiar with is this, my steering wheel control, because no one is, no one knows them all because there's different scenarios for different cars. On mine, it tells you right here, I need the black and I need the red. So there's my black. There's my red. The green wire goes to the wire in the car, which is my communication wire. Okay, so you got white, yellow, orange, and blue are not used. So white, orange, yellow, and blue, not used. So I'm gonna chop those right off. Get rid of that crap. Go grab some tape. Take these, insulate those right there. And when I do it, also leave yourself a little slack because if you ever get rid of this car and you want to take this and transfer it into another car, you don't want to be one of those people that yanks the wires out of the harness because then it leaves you in a pickle when you need that wire for your next job if you need it. So don't do that. Do like I do. That's the right way to do things. Okay, so now. Like it said, the green wire is going to be the data wire, which is going to talk to the car steering column. And it says I need the black and, that needs, and I need the red. So I'm going to leave those alone, put them like so. And over here, I'm going to go to my stereo harness. Now, yellow is constant, red, accessory key power, blue, white is my amp turn on, blue is power antenna. This car, although I'm pretty sure it doesn't have a power antenna, just for the hell of it, I'm going to leave it, okay? And I'm going to actually tie that into my red. So if you actually find it in a scenario where your car has a power antenna but your radio doesn't have an antenna output, tie it into the red. It's not perfect and it's not optimal in every case. However, 
like I was saying, it may not be optimal, but however, whenever you turn your car on, it'll turn on the power antenna. So you want to make sure it has power than not having power, okay? Now, this radio harness for my car also has an orange with a white. What is this? This is the uh, illumination wire. If your radio has an illumination wire, you want to tie those together. So what happens is when you turn your lights on in your car, it's going to put 12 volts onto this wire, which is going to tell the radio to dim automatically. My radio does not have that feature. So what you do in that scenario is just cut that sucker off and do like I did on the other one. Insulate it. Don't need it. And over here, this one's got some other goodies. It's a good thing that I use this harness because this harness has all the stuff that you would ever come across. Your pair of whites, which is your front left speaker. Sorry about that. Your grays, which are your front right. Your purples, which is your rear right. Your greens, which are your rear left. So these here are your eight speaker leads. What I'm left with is my black, which is my ground, and I also have a black with a white stripe. Black with a white stripe, most likely you're not going to have, but what this is, is an amp ground. If you have a factory amp, this is the ground, and I believe that they use this mostly because of, you know, if you have noise problems, it's just a way the manufacturers have it there. A lot of cases you don't even need it, but if you have a black and white, make sure you always tie it in with your black. It's very important that you do that. Okay, so as far as to the wiring part of this system, just want to have a little less on that orange wire. What I'm going to do is just tape that up like so in the harness. Make sure you get it insulated because that wire will throw 12 volts when the lights are on in your car. So what you're left with is your yellow which is your constant 12 volts. Red, which is your accessory 12 volts. Blue, which is your power antenna. Blue, white, which is your factory amp turn on. Black, white, which is your optional amp ground. Black, which is your regular ground. Green, black, which is your rear left negative. Green, which is your rear left positive. Gray black, which is your front right negative. Gray, which is your front right positive. White, front left positive. White black, front left negative. And the purples negative and purple positive. Same kind of deal, three quarters. I strip back just like I did on my radio side harness. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these suckers together, color to color, by the way. Not because it sounds like a good thing to do, because that's what the book says to do, and that's what you should be doing. Use me as a general reference. The right way to do it is what they tell you to do. Make sure you always do that. Don't be a num-num. Okay. So, I'll start with my powers. On my radio, I got my red. I got my red to my steering wheel adapter. Twist them up. And you got my red on the factory harness. And the blue for my power antenna, like I mentioned before. Not that I'll probably even need it. Doesn't even matter, but I'm going to put it on there anyway. These here are just regular crimp caps. They're like... Um, 22 to 16 gauge, I believe they are. My blue white, which is my factory amp or aftermarket amp turn on, whatever it may be. Color to color. And if you're curious, why do I use crimp caps? It's just my preference. I don't like butt connectors. I have nothing against butt connectors. They're just a pain in the ass. It's double the crimping. I don't like to be bothered with them. I just like to use crimp caps. I don't do this every day for a living. However, when I did, trying to make a living, this is pretty much how you can do that pretty effectively. So what I got left now, my powers. I have my grounds, my black and my black white. And I got these two blacks on my steering wheel adapter. And my black I'm 
my radio harness all together. So now, all I got left now is eight speaker wires here, and I got eight speaker wires here. I'm just going to make these color to color. See, it's not so bad, right? black make sure you pay attention to the ones with the stripes and the one without the stripes otherwise your stereo will be out of phase and sound weird Purples. Oh, that's weird. This purple almost looks like a little bit gray. Maybe it's just my eyes. You gotta be careful. So I got those all twisted up on there just crimp these on real quick. See how nice and fast they go? That's the way I like it. So you got that. So now that you have all that done, what you should be doing at this point is double checking your work. Yellow to yellow, red to red. I added that blue from my power antenna into my red like I talked about before. Blue white to blue white. All my grounds, two from my steering wheel adapter, one from my head unit, two to the factory harness. Green black, green black, green. White black, white, gray black. Gray, gray, purple, 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 black. Good, done. So now you got that. What you're going to want to do here is this. You want to try to always keep tension off of any harnesses that you ever put together. So one like that. And also right here. You got, this is the radio side. And that there is your stock radio harness side. So you're going to want to. Take all this extra crap, kind of neaten it up a little bit. So once that's done, have that, that. So that's going to go into my existing factory harness side. This is my Pioneer side. All I'm left with is these guys, which go into my steering wheel adapter. And this looks kind of butt ugly. So what I'll do with this is just tape these up. to leave accessible because that's going to be going to the data wire in the vehicle 
The green uh, data wire in this vehicle is located at the 40 pin connector at the steering column harness, by the way. In this car, anyway. So. I'll leave that loose. Okay. So now this is done. This is all good. This is pretty much what your finished product should look like. On top of that, I'm going to take this, plug this into my steering wheel adapter. Just take all this stuff and get rid of that for now. Now, moving on to the radio itself. This car is pretty straightforward. Now, if you're not familiar with pulling radios out and stuff like that, I'll give you a quick lesson on that. This here is just called a trim ring. You just I ain't really screw you with this tape stuff, huh? You just basically pull it off. It's held on there with these little clips, just like that. Just yank that sucker right out of there. Now. With your stereo, they should have provided a couple of keys. How these things work is like this. This little tab locks into a correlating tab on the radio. So when you push this in, it spaces it out, clicks in like that. And that will allow you to separate the radio chassis from the sleeve. You just push it backwards. Now I have my sleeve. So what you do with this... Let's go up to your dash kit. I don't need this. Take your sleeve. Slide that right into your dash kit like so. And you see all these little tabs. Right in here and here and here. What you do is take that tool, my hook tool, and then I just bend them like so. Find the one that's the closest to the plastic, so it's nice and tight. And that will keep this cage locked into this dash kit. So now you can see my sleeve is in there. Nice, nice. Then, go back to your radio again. Slide that in like so. The sleeve, I mean the trim ring from the existing Pioneer radio, you don't want to use this thing. I mean, unless you wanted to, I, I don't know why you would, but... With some of these kits, you have to use your own judgment of what you do, what you don't like, your preferences. And that's pretty much what it looks like. Done. Once you put it in, screw it in there. Take your harness. I'm not going to be putting this into the vehicle for another week or so. So for the time being, I'll just keep it all neat. Plug it on in there, and there you have it. The kit's done, harness is done, antenna adapter is done, steering wheel interface is ready to go. Um, just gonna box this all up until the time comes through the installation, and that will be another video, by the way, which will be a follow-up so you can see this as a completed product. But for the time being, you've seen it all. That's how it's done. That's how I do it.